coaches and managers and athletes, they, they got to get on the same page. It's very tough. When you start doing interviews with a guy, if you're a coach and you start doing interviews about your athlete, it, you always end up with a conflicting story. Or then the manager tries to step in. And the manager will falsely believe that he somehow knows something. Like the manager will see himself as here and the, and the athlete and the coach down here. That's just how the, the manager will falsely see it as though he stands back at 40,000 square feet and can take a better view of this thing. So then you got to have the manager weighing in. Now I'm talking about Paulo Acosta. Okay. So Paulo goes out there. He has his dreams dashed. He trained hard. He earned that opportunity. He did some heavy lifting and he did it the long, hardest route you could possibly take to get there and then has the, everything taken from him. That's what this sport is. It's very cold. But while Paulo is down, it never ceases to annoy me how many people are willing to dance on a guy who beat 15 other men. 16 times a bat, he got 15 of them out of the park. I mean, in all fairness, it's just a tough spot he's in. But I don't know that we only have to kick him. Now, here's the problem. When you're trying to get a rematch, which is what Paulo wants, and this isn't the debate that we have of how realistic that is or what is he going to have to do to do it. Let's just accept the notion that this is what the athlete wants. Okay. If the athlete should get what he wants, it's going to be good for the coach. It's going to be good for the manager. But when the three of them aren't on the same page and the three of them come out and do interviews spread over three days, three different interviews with three different and conflicting stories, you see where this becomes a problem. You can get a real match real, uh, you can get a rematch real easy if everybody sticks to the script, no matter what the script is. Here, I'll give you an example. You want to know an example of how easily you can get a rematch if you just come out with a narrative? Just put it out there and walk away. Don't ever let anyone else in your team or camp take away from it. Deontay Wilder, who got smashed by Tyson Fury, is about to get a rematch with Fury because Deontay walked to the ring in a costume that weighed 40 pounds, and by the time he was to the ring, his legs were too tired. Now, in the world of excuses, that is the most fugazi one I have ever heard. However, I did see him walk out in that costume, and he did look very flat, and I have no other way to connect those dots. So let's say it was the costume of the walk to the ring, the costume of the fight. Okay, great. Let's do it again. So now that we know that a ridiculous story can get you what you want, make sure you have a story. Just make sure there's only one. Paulo Acosta said something was wrong that night. Only I know no excuses. Congrats to Adesanya. I will see you again down the road. That works for me. It creates a speculation. It offered something. It created a speculation. And then you have the bigger, what we call a tease, which is I will see you down the road rematch. You then have his manager come out and say that he did not follow the game plan. And you had one of his coaches come out and talk about something that happened with a nerve issue in his back that was causing pain to the left side of his body. So we have three different versions, but they're not the same version, all coming from the same team, which is why managers and coaches should not go out and do those interviews. I've never seen a coach come out and help. I've seen them hurt. I could point them out one by one, name by name, that hurt the business, but that's not their job. So just stay in your lane. Same thing goes with the manager. As much as the manager wants to put on the fancy suit and collect a big paycheck for not doing anything at the end of the night, that does make him the smartest one in the room. The one who has a level of participation but never has to go to the grind of the practice or step into the actual cage is the smartest guy in the room, I will concede. But if he's going to come out with a message that is not in line with the other two pieces of the triangle that are all trying to get the same thing, you've got a mistake. You have a mistake being made in front of your eyes. And anytime somebody comes out and talks about a game plan, he loses credibility because there's no such thing. There is no, you, you have your skills that you've worked a lifetime to acquire. And this guy has his skills that he took a lifetime to acquire. One of you is going to bring those skills into the cage and one of you isn't. And it's either because he overthought it or he got intimidated. Mike Tyson would put his beady little eyes on you and make sure you left your tool set in the back and never even brought it to the ring. Anderson did that for a period of his career, just by example. That's fair game and that works. 
But to make believe that you had some kind of a mythical strategical game plan with an athlete who's been doing this his entire life, by the way, perfectly, 15-0 and record, and then he somehow did not implement the game plan. Clayton Hires knows more about fighting than anybody I've ever met. And Clayton will tell you this game is as simple as this. I touch you, and you don't touch me. 